So if you're listening to this, God bless you. You must really like my show. <laughs> Either that or you just stumbled on this by accident. I realized that in part one, I missed one movie that I did want to talk about for a while. Actually, I missed a couple. There's the Snow White and the Huntsman. That's going to suck. We all know it's going to suck. You know, we saw friggin' Red Riding Hood. I listed that as my number one worst movie of last year. Probably is going to fall pretty high up on the list, too. And I'm sure I'll see it. I'll make a review and tell you just how bad it is. Kristen Stewart, I'm really turning on her as an actress after friggin' Twilight. She's actually not bad. I have seen movies where she's not great, but decent enough. But I seriously doubt that this is going to in any way redeem her for Bella Swan. Uh, anyway... Now to talk about a movie that I am looking forward to, which is coming out that same month. Coming out in June is the movie Brave, Disney Pixar movie. And right there, can you really go wrong? I mean, some of those movies haven't been fantastic, but with Disney Pixar, you know you're going to get some pretty high-class stuff. The stories are all extremely well-crafted. They have to be because the animation requires it. And now there's one with some action and adventure, and it looks really good. It's still got the funny stuff that we saw in the trailer, you know, where he says, like, I present to you master so-and-so, greatest swordsman in the world, and then all of a sudden it's like, actually, he's behind him, and it's a scrawny guy, and the princess is like, oh, God. Now, this is, of course, not an original story. There are millions of stories about some medieval maiden who doesn't like the life that's been handed to her, doesn't like the gender roles, so she goes out and fights some kind of monster or becomes some kind of warrior. I'm describing this movie like I don't like that type of movie. It's not that, it's just it's been done so many times. I'm not sick of that type of movie, but I'm sick of the way they execute it because most of these movies do the same thing. It's like they're recycling the same character again and again and again. But with this character, with the Disney version, there seems to be something else to it. She seems, like, very, like, kooky, very odd, almost crazy, which I think is kind of cool. And the other thing, I don't see the cliché, one of the clichés that I really hate in a movie. And this is very personal. I'm sure I'm the only person that has a problem with this. But in Brave, most of the images you see of this girl, she has, like, her long, curly hair, like, all over the place. If that's the way she's staying for the whole movie, then I'm really happy. And again, this is going to be really bizarre, but I hate, I hate the cliche of the girl that wants to change, like, the gender roles in society. And so when she finally goes out to battle, the first thing she does is chop off all her hair. I am so sick of movies and TV shows using haircuts as a symbol of empowerment or liberation And the only reason I'm really sick of it is it's been done so many times. It's, like, almost obligatory. You've got, like, a a feisty female maiden wants to go off and fight the dragon, so cut off all her hair. Every single time they do this. It's actually one of the issues I have with Tangled. Like, they have to, of course, do some kind of plot line where once she cuts off her hair, that's a symbol of her freedom. Does it always have to be that way? Can a girl, like, actually show her liberation and still have long hair? It happened in Lord of the Rings. You know, you don't see Arwen cutting off all her hair, which is about to go save Frodo from the ring wraiths. It can be done. And I know you all think that I'm, like, completely bizarre, but if you know me, you know I'm bizarre already. But I am sick of that cliche. And it seems that this movie is not going to use it. So I'm actually happy that this movie might Continue the old with going with some new, if you could follow me. And if I haven't lost you completely, let's look at some other movies that are coming out. Um, looks like it's going to be a cool movie for the summer. And then, of course, in October, we've got Paranormal Activity 4. Which, do I really need to say anything more about that? Um, I know nothing about the movie. I don't think anybody knows what the movie is going to do. You know, the ending of Paranormal Activity 2 led me to believe that we were going to go into Katie and Hunter and and what happened with them after the fact. Then along comes Paranormal Activity 3, which deals with none of that and seems to head back in time. So with the ending of Paranormal Activity 3, a spoiler alert here, 
it seems that they're going to go forward with the 80s plot line and now go to the house burning down and maybe when Katie gets haunted when she's 13. I don't know. I mean, I really hope that the movie would kind of move forward in the story. But, of course, they've got a few other movies. And, you know what, as long as they keep making these movies, if they keep doing what they're doing, they're still going to be really good movies. But at a certain point, they are going to have to do something radically different. And when that happens, it's probably going to lose a lot of mainstream fans. And even some of the people that have been waiting for a change all this time are probably not going to be happy with whatever change they make. But it's obligatory. Sooner or later, they're going to have to change something up big time. And they do manage to make things different every time. But sometime between Paranormal Activity 4 and Paranormal Activity 6, they're going to have to change up the series a little bit. They're going to have to either get rid of the found footage thing or just go, you know what, we're just doing this as a first-person thing where the camera is your eyes. It's not a camera, it's just you. Which, you know what, that'd be kind of cool, but I'm sure they're not going to do that. But Paranormal Activity 4, I'm sure it's going to be scary. I'm there. It's going to be on my list, I'm sure. All right, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Um... I have to see what that is. I, I should have done this with the last one. Uh, oh, no, wait. Oh, okay, yeah, it's not... I was wondering if they were just re-releasing that. No, apparently they're not. Uh, Halloween 3D? Let's see what that is. Uh, that's another continuation. <laughs> fuck that shit. And the Twilight Saga. Holy fuck balls, am I dreading that one. Although, I have to say, in some ways, I'm looking forward to it because it's fucking over now! <laughs> These Twilight movies will be gone! And of course, they're going to have those stupid marathons that people are going to watch and still milk money into this franchise, but finally! The end of those friggin' Twilight movies! Damn! Just that, I don't know whether this is one of the movies I'm dreading the most or anticipating the most, because it's the end of the friggin' saga! And hopefully sooner or later everybody will turn around and the backlash will happen and everybody will realize what a piece of shit these movies were. And actually, how many people don't realize it already? How many people go to Twilight just to make fun of it? You know, I'd like to take a survey. That's what I should do this year when I go see this movie. I should take a survey of how many people are legitimately going to watch this movie and how many people are going there just to make fun of it. Because it's probably at least 50-50. I don't know, that'd be a fun assignment. Somebody make a survey about that. Now going to December of next year, Les Mis, which stars... Um, who's in that? Again, I know Anne Hathaway is playing Fontaine. Uh, that's a good enough choice. Uh, who's playing Valjean again? Hugh Jackman? Not the casting choice that I would expect. Although the guy is a really good actor. Russell Crowe is Ex Inspector Javert. Yeah, hey, you know, you, you got gold there. Um, the only thing is, I don't know if this is a musical, or if this is, uh, it looks like it's based off the novel, so I guess it's not the musical version. A live adaptation of the movie has already been done with Liam Neeson and uh, Jeffrey Rush. A well-acted movie, I have to say. Maybe not the best adaptation of the novel, but a very good movie, I thought, at the time. I don't see the need for a remake unless you're going to do the musical version of it, but who knows. And now we have The Great Gatsby, which is going to be released in Christmas of next year. I mean this year, because we're at 2012 now, i got to remember that. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with this novel, I apologize, because I know this one very well. Uh, one of the things I majored in college, among other things, was English. And everybody raved about Great Gatsby. You ask your English teacher, past or present, what's their favorite novel, they're probably going to say The Great Gatsby. This is just my own opinion. I like it, but it's certainly not my favorite. I don't know. As you can possibly imagine, I'm more into the, like, the, the old British lit and Shakespeare tradition. The American tradition, there's a lot of stuff that I like, but I'm not real enamored with it. Great Gatsby is a great novel, but... Boz Lerman is taking this on. Boz Lerman, as we all know, takes on big, huge epics. And I like his other work. I like the Boz Lerman Romeo and Juliet, and I know there's going to be a lot of people that slam me for that one. And I did like Moulin Rouge, and I know there's going to be a lot of people that slam me for that one. 
I don't see how this guy is going to direct The Great Gatsby, because you really can't make this story stylized. You kind of have to do it straight. 1920s America does not lend to big, elaborate scenes and sets and throwing shit at the camera. And, okay, there's high emotions with Daisy Buchanan, the main female character, and Jay Gatsby, played by Leonardo DiCaprio in this one. And I'm sure they're going to market this movie with plenty of images of Jay Gatsby and Daisy Buchanan. I'm sure Boz Lerman is going to embellish the hell out of that romance. I just hope he doesn't go too far, because you can go pretty high up with that. There's the Robert Redford version of this film, where he, like, appears behind her in the mirror. It's actually a pretty good piece of cinematography. Uh, some people find the movie really boring, and I don't blame them, but I do like that entrance. And the way they did that movie... The romance was pretty heightened, but in my opinion, without really ruining what F. Scott Fitzgerald set out to do. Because anybody who knows F. Scott Fitzgerald, the guy wrote this whole thing because he was mad at his wife. His wife, Zelda, like, found another lover. Yeah. And so that's what this novel is largely about, although it also shows you what life in the 1920s was like. And I'm sure that Boz Lerman can capture the period, but he's probably going to make this thing as over-the-top as possible. And I guess it's worth seeing, but I'm sure this is going to enrage the hell out of a lot of English professors. It may enrage the hell out of me, too, but then again, as I said, I'm not, like, a huge Gatsby worshipper. Some people might call me a Tolkien worshipper, but I don't think that's accurate. By the way, yes, of course I'm looking forward to The Hobbit. That goes without saying. Sorry, it's not a big in-depth analysis, but as I said about The Dark Knight, if you know anything about me, you probably know why I'm looking forward to it. So enough of hearing me talk. I want to hear you talk. I want to hear your opinions on the movies of this year. What are you looking forward to? Why are you looking forward to it? What are you really dreading? What are you really dreading about it? And maybe there's a movie coming out that I didn't mention, and you want to know what I think about it, what I expect of it. I'll hear that too, and I'll give my opinion. But that's about it for now. Off to do some more podcasts and work on the Batman and Robin review. Well, that's it for today. Happy New Year. And as always, thanks for listening.